Hey friends, we are in Scorpio season, <laughs> we are in eclipse season. How are you? How are we all doing? <laughs> um, I myself <laughs> have certainly been in the void, um, deep in the void, it, it feels like, and um, a lot of initiations, I will say. Um, and, you know, initiations that can sound like such a big kind of fancy official word, you know, where we think of like rituals and ceremonies. But um, we are living in a time where our everyday life is an initiation. <laughs> we are constantly experiencing and being presented with new initiations and it's not always going to even feel like an initiation I think until sometimes like we've gone through it or we can kind of recognize it in hindsight um and it's like not cute often you know <laughs> like it's not like we're wearing like long white robes and um you know, going into the temples or like walking the spiral. Um, it might look more like, I don't, I don't even, I don't even know. I don't even want to use any like experiences or examples from my own life recently because it just feels, everything feels like too fresh, um, like not ready for public consumption is kind of a weird word but um there's just been I it, it honestly it had no, nothing like flashy you know nothing like sexy nothing like hasn't felt any like anything major it's just sort of these like quiet um slow <laughs> not all well not always slow um I want to say difficult, but it really, like, you know, the more you surrender, like, it really doesn't have to be difficult. Um, but, like, letting it, just letting shit happen, you know, like, where the mind really wants to judge and experience as, like, this sucks and it doesn't have to suck. <laughs> um, how can I, let's see if I can explain. Let's see if I can go through that. Also, I probably sound super nasally because I've been doing a bunch of deep cleaning and really kicking up some of my allergies. So I'll try not to sniffle into your ear. In fact, I'm just going to pause and blow my nose for a second. Okay, better. So I've definitely talked about initiations before and letting it easy be letting it be easy before. So I'm not gonna like go too deep into that, but I you know just as a quick reminder, <laughs> um, really like letting yourself bring all of the crunchy bits like into your loving, accepting presence. Like that is that is the key. That is the path forward. Um, you know, like we're being shown in the moment like what we need to see in order to move ahead and sometimes like avoiding that or like blocking that out or numbing that out like that's just like we're just prolonging our um I don't know our mastery maybe um all right <laughs> let's <laughs> let's get into Scorpio season um as always, I made a little body graph of the Scorpio activations that I'll put up on the website that you can check out, but um, it was really so fascinating to me, as always, about how these activations kind of relate to like Scorpio energy, Scorpio vibes in general, and could probably feed into um, even some like collective fear around Scorpio and just getting right on into that you know Scorpio season is a season of transformation it's like we're entering into the darkness we're entering into this like alchemical process of well death really you know like letting things die we can see in nature that playing out with everything kind of like starting to 
slowly release the youthful glow of spring you know the trees are like dropping their leaves um the mushrooms oh my god the mushrooms the mushrooms are popping out um i an unexpectedly delightful thing about moving to wales was mushroom season like i've never seen such a wild variety like everywhere um and you know one of the things like mushrooms they, they feed on the decay and it's like they turn that into something beautiful and expand the network you know expand this mycelial network it's just this it's a it's an amazing process and i'm sure we've all you know heard about this whole um you know letting your own letting the decay of your own you know old shit old patterns like past identities like really letting that be the fertilizer for your new growth and scorpio really ushers all that stuff in and um you know there is certainly a collective fear of the unknown a fear of death and it's really interesting how so much of this is kind of reflected in these Scorpio season activations like number one the first thing that stood out to me is the fact that there are no collective activations like no collective dates are activated and that includes earth activations as well so looking at like the sun activations along with the earth activations um no collective gates and in the body graph there are three kind of like flavors of gates I mean there's many but one of the one of the categorization systems is collective energy um, tribal energy and individual energy and collective energy really does speak about like you know the larger collective as a whole um, and tribal energy is more like community energy energy like your close friends and family like the actual people that you're interacting with on a regular basis and then individual energy is like this most um kind of the most like wild card energy like the tribal energy really likes some well and the collective as well like really you know they like stability they want to know like okay here's we've got food on our table there's more coming in this person's taking care of this the collective is like okay well like let's build some infrastructure to like you know support all of the tribes coming together and then the individual is kind of like on the fringes like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go do this thing <laughs> the uh tribal and collective energies are a little bit terrified of the individual like bringing in something new it's like a bunch of creative mutative like wild card energy where you know you never know what's gonna come in and so that's kind of all that's what that's what we got going on in Scorpio season. We have a whole lot of individual energy. In fact, um, when you look at again the sun and the earth activations together on the body graph, we've got this like whole central column of energy, like running through what are called the tantric channels. Um, from the sacral center up through the G center, which is like the spiritual heart center, up to the throat, even like meeting the Ajna. So like it's like from the mind down to the gut. It's like this column of wild card, individual, creative, <laughs> creative energy, um, which is it's really incredible to me. Um, just having a having a peek at this, and then we also do have an extra um well everything else that's activated is is activated in the spleen which is kind of another um you know the spleen it's like intuition and it's like this energy of inexplainable like uncanny knowing which you know again is, is a little bit demonized and has been demonized for thousands of years you know where it's like okay but like what about like looking at these things logically like do we have an empirical study that says this is true like what is the pattern and there's definitely some logical pattern based energy happening um like running through the sprint running through the spleen for sure 
but um, the particular activations that we have here are we have some tribal activations and then we have one more individual activation and um, it is more of like this uncanny knowing where it's like almost this ability to like smell change in the air or like smell the most subtle shifts in your environment to like sense danger or to sense like this person is correct for me this person is not correct for me like this is what we need to like be healthy and well um and I will talk more about those <laughs> all of these like different flavors um individually getting into it in a second um let me see if I see anything else that wants to come up while I also pause and <laughs> blow my nose again <laughs> okay here we go let me see any other themes that I want to bring in you know, another thing that actually stood out for me that could feed kind of this like collective wariness of Scorpio energy is this, um, this energy of integrity and like values and truth where it is this kind of awareness, this intuitive awareness of like, um, I love this gate. I'm actually going to, and this is actually perfect because gate, gate 50 kind of like starts off Scorpio season. Um, it's the bridge from Libra into Scorpio. And I really love that this gate is called the gate of the cauldron, <laughs> uh, which is so perfect. Scorpio, you know, Halloween, creepy crawly things like death and alchemical transformational energy, um, which the collective does find. Well, I don't, you know, I keep saying the collective, like as if the collective is sort of this like rotten old, like stodgy energy. And I mean, honestly, where's the lie? <laughs> but um, that is like the old paradigm collective. I mean, for me, obviously, all of this is my own opinion. Um, but as a collective, we have definitely been conditioned, again, for like thousands and thousands of years to really fear this Scorpio energy, like fear the depths, like don't go there. If you like go into the depths, you might discover your own power you might discover your own wisdom you might figure out that like you don't need like daddy collective caring for you um and I also don't want to say like I think actually um you know like there's like daddy energy there's like toxic masculinity energy um and then there is you know this sort of like nanny state energy but I love here in Scorpio season, one of the activations is gate one, which is like the, the masculine principle of divine creative energy. And actually we're in um, gate one energy right now as we speak. The eclipse, the lunar eclipse that just happened, um, the sun was in gate one, earth was in gate two, which I wrote, I sent a newsletter out about this. I thought it was just such a, like the theme was, the theme is sacred union. Um, gate one being the masculine principle, gate two where the earth is being the feminine principle. And it's really this divine union where it's not about like throwing out, um, you know, like it's not about get rid of the men, you know, um, or like suppress like all of the masculine energy. It's really like let's elevate the masculine and the feminine, you know, let's like return to harmony. Let's return to this union, this inner union, this inner union of masculine and feminine that lives within us all. So, um, I think that was a bit of a tangent and I can't, I can't remember where I began. <laughs> I know I was talking about, um, gate 50 and the cauldron and oh yeah how this adherence to one's own personal value system like one's personal truth um you know can be really scary to the current dying actually dying old paradigm where it's all about like look to authority to save you like look to the priests like your connection to god is via, you know, these ordained men in, in most cases, you know, and the demonization of the feminine, 
all of this stuff. So, um, so yeah, Scorpio energy could be pretty scary to um, that paradigm that has been, um, you know, in power for so, 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 so long. Um, okay, so yeah, gate 50, the gate of the cauldron. It's really all about this energy of um, integrity and truth and knowing what's ready to die. Like what can we like throw back into the cauldron to be dissolved and, you know, combined with some fresh new ingredients to make a potion <laughs> to lead us into the future for the highest wellness of the tribe, leading to the highest wellness of the collective. Um, okay, I'm just gonna pause talking for a second because I think, I don't know. Okay, I'm just gonna have to pause again because I just got this like little pop-up and I think it, I don't know, it, it might have just paused a bunch of what I just said, which I would be bummed, but we'll, whatever, we're going to move on. But first I'm going to pause. Okay, false alarm, thankfully, because that would have, <laughs> that would have sucked. I would have no idea what I had just said. In fact, I still, you know, even now I don't, I really never know, you know, stuff just kind of comes out and I let it go which, as I've said before, has been so terrifying my entire life. But now I just kind of go with it and it seems to work. <laughs> but um, yeah, I could I could never repeat myself if I had to. So, OK, moving on, moving on. Um, so we have this kind of scary like adher adherence to one's personal truth and integrity in Gate 50. And I say kind of scary because gate 50 isn't afraid to throw out what isn't working even if um you know there are people in power who are benefiting from what isn't working so you know they're obviously going to want to like keep the status quo and gate 50 is like no fuck that like we need to compost some shit and this is what we're going to compost um and again the collective might not be so into the idea of change um, but also supporting that change, we have the earth in gate three during this time, which is kind of really all about like taking those tentative steps forward, like sprouting into the future, like what's growing, what's beginning. And gate 50 is going to feed that soil, you know, so gate three, um, can grow and blossom. Um, okay. Okay. So in October, on October 25th, the sun moves into 28 and the earth moves into gate 27. And I really love this because um, gate 28, you know, we just talked about how like have gate 50 with this like uh, personal integrity. There might be some energy where like gate 50 has to kind of like fight for what it believes in, where the collective might have some pushback or I mean, you know, anywhere, anyone, anywhere could have some pushback. And um, gate 28 actually is going to be the one willing to fight for what it believes in, like fight the power, you know, fight for power, um, fight for what makes life worth living. Like this is gate 28 energy. So again, a little bit scary to the collective, to the powers that be. Um, gate 28 is this individual energy again this is also in the spleen center the center of like primal intuition and it's just sort of this like knowing you know this is like okay no this isn't this isn't working like this isn't right like sure maybe we've been doing this for like thousands of years but like that doesn't make it right you know just because it's what we've been doing or just because like what um, you know, authority figures say that it, that is the right thing to do or that it's just how it is. Like that doesn't necessarily make it right. And gate 28 is going to come in and say like, okay, well, I'm willing to um, battle you <laughs> to <laughs> make a change. <laughs> and um, it's really funny, actually. I have gate 28, which can be a potentially a little bit of like an argumentative energy and um, my husband has the quantum connection here, gate 38. So it is this actual 
kind of like magnetic attraction but it's also um it can be like a really feisty energy because both of us are like you know it's like the the energy like the drive to um you know stand up for what you believe in paired with the sort of like intuitive awareness of like what's worth fighting for and then like we meet and we're like let's have a feisty conversation (laughs) and you know, it definitely is something, it's been a really amazing learning experience. And I have to say like, you know, shit's shit's never boring. (laughs) So the key with this one is, I think, you know, keeping it light, keeping it playful, um, remembering not to take everything like so, so, so seriously. Because of course, like some of these are huge, major, you know, serious issues. Um, but if we like bring that battle energy to the table, um, like if we're gripping too tightly, it, I don't know, it's, some, it's like something like about, I want to say it's like a universal law, <laughs> but if you fight something with too much resistance to the thing, like you're feeding the thing. Um, and I'm not going to go super deep into that one right now. In fact, I'm just going to leave it there for now. (laughs) But, um, you know, gate 28 is actually called the gate of the game player. You know, it implies this, like this lightness, this playfulness and yeah, like gambling, we can take, we can take any kind of like gamble, any kind of game too far. Um, but ideally, this isn't about, um, like ideally we would come back to this inner awareness, this inner knowing that ultimately we are always safe. We are infinite beings of love, <laughs> like literally. And um, yeah, okay, let's, let's actually, I'm gonna come back to my chart and the sun here being in gate 27. I really love this because I feel like this does give us like a really lovely grounded grounding energy with the earth in gate 27 while the sun is in gate 28 because 27 is really like the energy to like care for yourself and others. Like it is this very altruistic energy. This is actually one that makes a quantum connection, like creates a whole channel with um, gate 50 from the spleen to the sacral center. Um, And then, you know, 50 is the cauldron, the gate, this integrity gate that we just talked about. Um, So really like bringing this level of like, it's not just about sort of like fighting in the void. Like there is this energy as well of like, of caring for others. And again, like caring for yourself, like what's really going to bring like the brightest, best world for everyone to enjoy. Um, okay, so moving on, on the 31st Halloween, the sun moved into gate 44, um, and the earth moved into gate 24. So gate 44, um, again is in the splenic center and it's like this energy of primal ancestral memory this like intuitive awareness this sort of like energy of smell you know like smelling things on the wind smelling things in your environment like smelling a rat like something smells funny like um just this energy of like very subtle deep environmental attunement and awareness of you know again like this wellness energy, this health energy, like what is going to be best for the community, like what's best for the tribe, which again, like feeds into the collective. Um, Like I think all of this stuff does begin at the individual level, which then does catch on in the tribe, which then spreads to the collective. Um, So this tribal energy of just kind of like wanting what's best for everyone and like knowing like having this desire to like actually deliver it to the people. Um, There's a bit of fear of the future here because of this like ancestral memory, but being able to really rely on your intuition in order to transcend that collective fear. Um, You know, fear is something that is just, it's kind of always going to be present. Um, It is like a 
collective field. Like there's always going to be something to find to like place our fear into. Um, and as a tribe, oh my God, someone is scratching the door to come in. I will be right back. Okay. We were talking about fear, collective fear field and the tribe. So at one point, um, there was really this fear of, you know, if you were an individual within the tribe, like you might get kicked out of the tribe or, you know, killed either way, you're going to die and like game over, you know, that as that's actually a really big fear in gate 28 as well. It's like, okay, like what actually makes life worth living? Like, how can I seize the day? Um, and a lot of the stuff in the spleen and some of these other connections, well, that's also some <laughs> more, more than maybe we want to get into today, but there, there's like a fear of, of death and a confrontation of the fear of death. And, um, where was I going with that? So gate 44 and this collective fear field, um, you know, I have no idea where I was going. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move on and like, maybe, maybe it'll come back. Um, okay. What's next? Oh, I, I want to mention briefly about, um, the earth in gate 24, which is actually in the Ajna center, like reaching out for gate 61 and the crown, which is all about this like search for inner truth. And gate 24 is this like energy of sudden bursts of insight. This is another kind of like, you know, insights from the void energy. It doesn't really necessarily have anything to do with like logic or experience. It's just this like inner knowing. And it is kind of part of this, um, well, not kind of, it is part of this <laughs> central channel that is activated all throughout Scorpio season of this like individual creative energy, these like sudden bursts of insight, like the birth of the new, um, really beginning. This is so interesting, actually, just like the visual and physical structure of how a Scorpio season, and I mean, Taurus season, actually as well because Scorpio is sort of like the the inversion um, of Taurus season and you have like all the way from the Ajna again into like the sacral center it's like this column running through four of the six central columns in the human design body graph we just have the um the root open and the crown open, but also is what's what's so interesting to me is that like Pluto, this energy of like radical revolutionary truth has been kind of like bouncing back and forth between gate 60 and gate 61 for years, which is sort of like the um, like cornerstones almost, <laughs> like 60 kind of like reaches out and gives us the drive to like birth this radical new truth into the world and like meets gate three that energy of sprouting in the sacral center and then gate 61 is the gate of the mystery it's the gate of inner truth and it's this like drive to know inner truth that like deep inner knowing like gnosis energy and gate 61 in the crown meets gate 24 in the ajna which is where the earth is when the sun is in gate 44. Um, okay, little, little structural lesson there. Um, on November 6th, the sun moved into gate one and the earth moved into gate two. And we did just briefly talk about this with like the sun being, um, in this gate of, it's like the most masculine energetically in the, in the I Ching, in the mandala, in the human design body graph. And it's really all about like this creative penetration, like create, like penetrating the world with your creative energy. And then the earth in gate two, it's like the reception of your own like life force energy, of the reception of your own direction in the world. And in the body graph, these are actually very directional energies, like your life direction. 
Um, and the nodes have been in gates one and two for a minute now. So like even as a collective, um, the north node is in gate two and that's like destiny. That's like where we're going. So as a collective, like we are returning to a balance between masculine and feminine and like a remembrance of the feminine principle because for so long, you know, it has just been so suppressed and demonized and, you know, like literally like burned out of people. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, um, yeah, that's, that's a, a good direction to be going in. I think this remembrance so with the sun in gate one, um, well, you know, I think I just kind of like, that's that, that's that, that feels complete, honestly, with the sun in gate one and the earth in gate two. Um, and then again, we just had this, like this eclipse, um, happening, this Taurus full moon, lunar eclipse, and really just like being with that inner union. I just, I've, I'm trying to think if anything else wants to, well, I'm not, it's like thinking is the wrong word. It's just, I just feel this energy of like stillness right now, honestly. So maybe even like feeling in your own body, like just like feeling what is present right now. Feeling into your heart space. Just taking a breath, taking a moment to relax and just be present. And just remembering that, you know, we can come back to this energy in any moment. And I will continue on. Where are we going next? Um, okay, November 11th, the sun is going to move into gate 43 and the earth is going to move into gate 23. And this actually, this sun earth combo actually creates a channel in itself. And it's like that freak to genius energy. <laughs> it's like this energy of, um, like again, creative bursts of insight, like actually expressing those in the world, like manifesting those in the world. Um, and this is a connection from the Ajna center to the throat center. And again, like terrifying for the tribe and the collective because it's this individual coming in with this like wild new idea, this wild new plan, this wild new insight. And it's like, you know, the tribe and the collective are like, okay, no, we've been doing it this way. Like we're good. You know, we, we're very resistant to change. <laughs> we're like a little bit scared of change. Um, like, what does that mean? Who's going to be in power? Like, let's, you know, let's not uh, give individuals back their power because that's terrifying to us. And, you know, again, like that's actually like all power is ultimately individual power. Um, and I think a big activation here, you know, interestingly, the um, like Venus, I'm just going to check my my current just now chart on taraka.io um because i believe that venus is still in gate 43 yeah she is so this to me feels like a release of um like she's like helping us relax any feeling of like fear or danger around old vows of silence and secrecy um, where once we were like, I need to keep quiet or I might be burned at the stake. Um, Venus is like really helping us kind of just like relax and release here and remember that we are totally actually now safe to express ourselves. <laughs> um, you know, at this point, really the worst thing is getting canceled and I can confirm that like, it's not that bad. <laughs> um, I mean, I didn't get like very canceled, but <laughs> just a low key canceled. And um, it actually brought um, some really amazing people into my life. Like a friend that I did, like a really, I mean, someone who I love 
dearly. And I, I wouldn't even know this person if I hadn't been like, I'm really sick of just sitting here and like <laughs> listening um, to what I felt was like not not true, like untruths, um, like false propaganda that was actually not for the highest collective interest and well-being. Um, and yeah, you know, it definitely did not like land well <laughs> with, with a lot of people, but like the people that it did resonate with, it's like, it, it, um, uh, hmm, it just feels, it feels like a, it's like a warm, honestly, like a warm kind of like, rela it just feels like a warm relaxation. It feels like freedom. That's what it feels like. Um, so gate 43 is, is really helping us to remember that. And with the earth in gate 23, it's like, okay, well, how can I actually like ground that into reality? Like, how can I, you know, practice actually saying or expressing what I feel inside? Like what I'm, what I'm thinking, like my, my truth. Um, and like, you can take baby steps. You don't have to like make Instagram posts about it or like post on Facebook. Like you can, um, I mean, honestly, like whatever feels, whatever feels comfortable. Um, but it doesn't have to like, don't blow out your nervous system essentially is, is what I'm saying. Okay. So let me go back to my chart and see what is coming up after that. Um, okay, November 17th, the sun moves into gate 14 and the earth moves into gate 8. And this is actually um, my sun earth activation on my design side, the left angle cross of revolution. Um, and so I have a, an affinity for this one. <laughs> um, and again, we're kind of on that like central power column of like creative life force energy reaching out to the throat in order to be manifested and it's really interesting i mean even just like the structure honestly of all of these because um everything is like a little bit of a mirror of each other um so gate 23 um opens the throat from the ajna center and gate 8 opens up the throat from the spiritual heart center. It's like you're expressing your creative direction in the world. Um, and gate 14 is like really all about this love of work, really. <laughs> like, but definitely not work that feels like work. It's, it's more like following your own desire, like following your own creative life force energy um, and allowing that to kind of like begin to be released in the world. Gate, you know, we were talking about gate two earlier and oh no, my little garage band thing is blinking at me again. Um, okay. That's what terrified me last time I saw that. And I looked at my little, little thing that's like recording and had just, it had just paused. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> and, and it, and it, okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. We're going to move on. And I'm just going to cross my fingers that, that I got all that. Um, okay, where was I? So yeah, gate two, which is like the most receptive feminine energy in the body graph that we talked about earlier. Gate 14 actually reaches up um, from the sacral center and meets gate two in the spiritual heart center, the G center. Um, so again, this like really beautiful energy of like moving from... Um, I actually even mentioned this earlier because I feel like this is this has kind of been a big thing coming in for me where which is why I was like I don't even know if this podcast is going to happen this month because every time I thought about doing it like I really I wanted to do it earlier in the month like I like doing them earlier in the month so I can give this like okay here's what's coming up but it doesn't always happen that my energy is like available for that. And you know, the sacral center really is all about like energy availability <laughs> and gate 14 in particular is like, you know, it, it's like doing work that you love to do. And I've really been feeling lately when I force things like the creative seed 
the spark like isn't there. Like if I forced the podcast instead of just like letting myself do it when I woke up and I was like, oh, today's the day. Like, okay, cool. Because it had just felt so, like there was so much resistance and I don't know, just it, it, it would be a struggle. It wouldn't land. I would just like be pausing and like deleting everything and starting over like 20 times um, instead of just going with the flow. So yeah, that's been a thing, like really trusting my own energy availability. Um, you know, even though I'm a projector, I have this gate 14 and an open, um, undefined sacral center. Like I very much can still, like, I feel that I feel the truth of this energy. So even though I don't have necessarily that, like, uh, you know, I can do, I can do it for like eight hours a day. It's the kind of thing where when it's on, I know that it's time to, um, like go like go go with the energy that's there like follow that thread of energetic availability um to really like again gate two like follow my own path like trust my own direction leading up to gate one like penetrating the world with that creative direction and then here it pops out via the throat center gate eight um this like pure creative expression of like individual life force energy into the world so you know again going back to this kind of like collective power structure fear around scorpio season it's like oh like what if people like people really you know we kind of we can't really let people just want to do the work that they truly love doing like what like follow their own mastery follow their own bliss like because we kind of need like cogs in the machine (laughs) like we need people to like um you know do what they're told and do their busy work and we're trained for that from like childhood you know school like a school school system is so in my again in my opinion all of this is my own opinion is quite unnatural where we're having children just like sit at a desk all day long and like read from like very like narrow books about it's just the whole thing to me like the the further away I get from that experience I'm just like what the what the hell are we doing (laughs) you know um it's just it doesn't it doesn't actually make any even logical sense to me um but you know that's what we've been doing for so 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 long and again with this gate 14 energy that's really all about like passion and like following your passion I mean can you imagine if like everyone and I know this is kind of getting into I'm like am I gonna step in I'm gonna dig myself a hole here um this like a world where everyone I mean I truly do believe that we are all essentially like one giant organism (laughs) you know we're all kind of like little little mushrooms in the mycelial network like sprouting into the world and we are all one being ultimately you know and we're like individuals living in a 3d world so they're both they're both completely true um but as little like puzzle pieces in this greater whole if we all tuned into our internal guidance system and like really followed what was actually true for us instead of like what we should do what we're told to do like trying to fit into the existing like power structure that was essentially like manufactured for us to like fit into a certain role if we could kind of zoom out and say like actually the whole fucking system is pretty shitty right now um And I don't necessarily think we need to like blow up the whole system. Like I think we can um, enter it as awakened (laughs) individuals and dismantle it and kind of like redo it from the inside. Um, I don't think it has to be like a destroy the world kind of situation. But if we were all, I don't know, and trusting of our own path, like what a different world we would live in um yeah well I think 
I think on that note, <laughs> I think on that note, it feels complete. So <laughs> then on November 22nd, we will be getting into Sagittarius season and um, yeah, we'll talk again <laughs> then. Um, and let's see, any other notes? Um, okay, in the shop, or not really in the shop, on the website, I did just add, it's kind of like a build your own adventure kind of package thing where in the past I've kind of done more like structured, I don't really want to call them like coaching packages, but that's kind of what it is. It's like we do sessions and then there's um, like additional, you know, Voxer and email support in between. Um, but I kind of feel like it always, it always feels like more of a thing than it needs to feel like. And how can I articulate that in a clearer way? <laughs> um, I think it can feel a little bit scary and like inaccessible. And I also think that like having that additional access to me like via Voxer I really love voice messages I think that they're just so I, I just love them um an email you know because like you have a session and then it's like you just kind of are like go you go off into the world <laughs> and like but you you still like things from the sessions sort of start it's like these little resonances start to like ping each other from like your new awareness um, and like what you're actually experiencing in life and like these new initiations may present themselves. And I think having that extra support where you have um, essentially access to me, I, I think can be, I have found it to be um, really good, really awesome. So I have added that to um, the booking options where you can like get a single session, get a package of sessions, and then get two or four weeks as well in addition to support. So like after that, you can have that like integration space, like that integration container. And especially now during <clears throat> during eclipse season, <laughs> you know, no big deal. <laughs> I think that it could be a really valuable thing. So that is happening, and I think that's all. Um, yeah, as always, I welcome your feedback. Please rate and review and share if this resonates, and we will talk soon. Sending you love. Mm -hmm.